moving on into our what I would call what I'm calling the Game of Thrones period of the Maccabee family. After John Hyrcanus dies, he splits the rule of his kingdom up. Supposedly, John makes his wife the king, the ruler of Judea, and he makes his son Aristobulus the high priest. Aristobulus, of course, wants the power all for himself, is not happy to have be passed over and have his mother of all people become the ruler of the lands. So in true Game of Thrones fashion, Aristobulus seizes the throne. He has his mother and his brothers, except for Antigonus, who Aristobulus was very close with. He has all his other family members imprisoned, and he lets his mother starve to death in prison. That's pretty cold. So Aristobulus is able to seize power. He makes himself king and high priest. He's officially the first person to do this. And it's kind of informally happened previously. Josephus lists John Hyrcanus as king and high priest, as well as being a prophet. But Aristobulus is also kind of quoted by um, Josephus as being the first person to declare himself both king and high priest. Now Aristobulus and his brother, these were the guys who were laying waste to Samaria. They're competent generals, they're ruthless, but of course they're hardcore Orthodox Jewish people. They're following the Jewish and celebrating the Jewish Feast of Tabernacles. It's a seven-day festival, I believe. Again, uh, pardon my Hebrew if I'm getting it wrong. I believe it's pronounced Sukkot. It's the official name of the festival. But Aristobulus becomes sick during this Feast of Tabernacles. And at the same time, his brother Antigonus, who, again, they're very close together, Antigonus was returning from the conquest of Galilee, and he was wearing brand new armor. He had his honor guard with him. You know, you, you bring your best to the Festival of Tabernacles. He had just finished this up where Aristobulus was sick and unable to take part in the festival. And Aristobulus' wife, Alexandra Salome, hatches a plot with other people within the, uh, pardon me, court to seize control. And again, I love my Game of Thrones here. This is this book read way better than Game of Thrones. What Alexandra Salome does, she begins with other people within the court to play Aristobulus off his brother Antigonus. Because Aristobulus is sick and unable to take part in kind of officially ruling the lands, he's forced to rely on Antigonus to launch military campaigns. He's forced to rely on his wife and his court to kind of do the everyday running of the court. So you can imagine a sick king kind of sequestered away, relying on the words of people who are actively working against him and making choices based on that, having no direct interaction with people. And his brother Antigonus, who's away in battle, coming back with the army. And Alexandra Salome, who's been kind of running the kingdom with Aristobulus being sick as a puppet king, probably worrying that Antigonus is going to find out what's going on and that'll be the end of her. Another woman stuffed in a prison and maybe starved to death. And so she hatches a plot against Antigonus as he arrives for the Feast of the Tabernacles. She's been playing Aristobulus off Antigonus, claiming that Antigonus, who's tired of his being in the shadow of his brother, coming back with the army to seize 
the control of the city and the lands, Aristobulus orders himself to be shut up inside the fortress in the city and then orders that Antigonus come to him unarmed to answer for these crimes that have been charged against him. But of course he's sick, relying on his wife, relying on court intermediaries to reach out to Antigonus. And so we're told Alexandra Salome switches the official order and what gets to Antigonus is not arrive and answer for the charges of these treasonous crimes that have been brought against you. It's come to the fortress with your guards in your brand new armor and show me all the wealth that you've acquired in your conquest of Galilee. So Antigonus, who left for the conquest of Galilee knowing or you know him and his brother were in great terms and you know working well together says well great my brother wants to celebrate me so he shows up at the citadel in full armor with his honor guard wearing their weapons to show off to his brother what they acquired from the conquest of galilee and when he shows up the guards seeing him armed slaughter him because they a are either in on the plot and have an excuse to murder antigonus or they weren't in on the plot but aristobulus had ordered that if he showed up with weapons to kill him so that he doesn't take the throne so that's a uh, rock in a hard place um, scenario for antigonus Aristobulus only gets more sick with proper part pardon me partly guilt partly the sickness that has been deteriorating his health he's vomiting blood he supposedly dies on the very same spot his brother was killed in the fortress but Alexandra Salome with Aristobulus out of the way and Antigonus out of the way frees the other children of John Hyrcanus names she names Alexander's uh, Yanias the king was a son of John Hyrcanus and she marries him you can see Alexandra Salome is a ruthless woman who's able to um, manipulate both Aristobulus manipulate the court and the court are responding to her as an authority figure you know traditionally if you listen to my last episode we talked about the roles of women that we found out the higher up you were in the society of Jerusalem the less rights and freedom you had as a woman and yet Alexandra Salome is able to uh, manipulate and work with the court to not only become the puppet ruler of Aristobulus, but she names Aristobulus's heir. It's not the court that does that. And then she marries the heir. She marries Alexander Yanias. So even though the story, as we're told in Josephus, is Alexander Yanias is the one who conquers the lands of Judea and expands it to the largest it would ever be, in my head, I'm wondering, is Alexander Yanias just another puppet king? Another one doing what Alexander Salome is wanting to be done. She made him king. She destroyed her brothers. This is a formidable woman who will actually become queen after Alexander Yanias dies. 